Whole Sway in the building. All right, man, I'm, I'm just going to call you New Jersey. That's that's where you from? You you from New Jersey? <laughs> yeah, exactly, 973. All right, 973 in the building. All right, man, that's what's up. Starting your trucking career up in Jersey, up in the Northeast, man. How how did that work out for you? Because I'm I'm from the Midwest. I'm from Ohio. And driving my car up there is is a headache as it is, but I I give mad respect to you to the to the truck drivers that can handle the Northeast. So the did, did that's where you started from or what's your background? Yeah, so that's exactly where I started. Uh, first of all, I started with uh, LTO company. It was XPO Logistics. So I was running pups, 48 footers, 53s, and we would usually run around Passaic, uh, Clifton, Patterson. This is all in New Jersey. And the other parts of the northern side of New Jersey, and it's, you know, for those of people that drive trucks around Patterson, um, with a 53, it's, it's not fun. It's equivalent to driving like in Brooklyn. Um, and you know, speaking of Brooklyn, I'm actually in Brooklyn right now. So with that being said, I was started off originally with XPO logistics, but they slowed down. So I was with them for about nine months and they fired 10 dock workers and replaced those 10 dock workers with 10 drivers. Now, I left my last job because I didn't want to operate a forklift and unload trucks or just even load them up. So I got my CDO and, you know, I didn't want to go back to that route. And I left XPO because my hours were also cut short too. And I got into another company now where it's just strictly double axle tractors and 53 foot trailers. And we're running Pennsylvania, Maryland, the entire state of New Jersey and all five boroughs of, uh, New York, and um, it, it's it's not fun. Man, mad respect, bro. Mad, mad, mad respect, man. Because I, I personally, I, I don't think I can do it. I, I, I did. We when I was training, I, I came out to New York. We, we drove in some areas that I, I, I just told my trainer. I said, Nah, man. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I can't do it. So every time I get with a new company or something like that, if it's New York or the boroughs or anything like that, I, I can't do it. But outside of New York, New York State, maybe a little bit of Jersey, I I I, I would I would consider it. But mad respect to you guys because like I said, I I seen way too many videos, way too many articles that new drivers get in situations that they can't get out of what you know I'm saying. So was there any, was there any sticky situations with you? Um, I, being from that area, you, you probably pretty much knew all of the ins and outs, but getting in the truck, was there any sticky situations for you in the beginning? Yeah, I guess there was only one incident that I could think of the top of, from the top of my head. Um, and it was this one time where I was assigned the area of uh, Rutherford, and there's the American Dream Mall right next to the MetLife Stadium, and I had to do a pickup. And the docks there are everywhere. They're scattered around the entire building. And I had a 53, and I was going up a ramp. You know, the truck GPS was taking me this way. And I saw it was going inside the driver parking lot and I caught on to it. You know, it didn't, it just kind of took logic, like basic logic to kind of catch on and figure out, okay, my trailer, I'm not going to clear that. So uh, thank God there was no traffic at the time. Um, I didn't want to call, call a tow truck either because, you know, I, it was kind of like, it wasn't even my first year, it was a couple of months in and I didn't want to accumulate any points or anything. So um, again, thank God there was no traffic. I backed up in a straight line and got myself out of that situation. And that, I, honestly, that was probably the hardest thing I've ever been. Um, as far as like getting into tight docks and, you know, any other sticky situations, I, I, that's like a, I, that's the only thing I've ever gotten close to. And so I'm usually more of a defensive driver. 
being from the Northeast, does it get any better with time? I think it does. Yeah, I think you kind of uh, get used to it. Um, you know, I was I'm literally at the same warehouse I was at yesterday, and you know, again, I've kind of gotten really used to driving this like ginormous truck. You know, I'm in like in Brooklyn. People here they drive crazy and stuff. But I remember learning and training. It's like we have the power to bully people on the road, and it's you know it's it's a fact. But it really depends on the way you do it and stuff. Like here. When I'm on the George Washington Bridge and stuff, there's people trying to cut at all angles and stuff. Like sometimes people are not letting you merge in, but the moment you get your tractor on that lane, it's just really like people, okay, they're, they're going to let you go no matter what because either they got to be really stupid to like try to battle you or, you know, they're going to use, you know, their head and actually just let you go and stuff. But yeah, it does get better with time. Driving in the Northeast uh, in my car, I can tolerate it, but... Yeah, in in the truck, I I just can't do it. And again, man, mad respect to you. All right, man. So let's uh fast forward, man. Uh, twenty twenty three. You 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 put your time in. You says it's time to go. And now you you about to hit the friendly skies, man. Where where did uh <laughs> where did the inspiration to become a pilot come from? Oh man, I can answer this question in honestly like many ways. Like I, I can go on and on and on, but uh, just to give you a, a insight of to what got me into aviation was basically right, I started traveling the world at before I even got my CDO at like the age of twenty. I went to Poland, I went to Ukraine, uh, I went to Puerto Rico, and then this was all by myself up until Puerto Rico. I went with a couple of friends, but when I was up in like Central Europe and Western Europe, I was out there for about two months by myself it kind of made me realize that there's just so much more to life than the united states of america and i did that at a a young age i mean especially when covid was going on you know that side of the world it was really incredible at the time you know it it, it seemed like it seemed it, it didn't seem real because a lot of the people over there weren't wearing masks like that side of the world, it's like everything was still going on. The clubs were shutting it down at five, five in the morning. People were getting drunk. It's like it, it just it, it seemed so unreal. And at that point, it made me open up my eyes to traveling more. And fast forward to years down the line, till uh, twenty twenty one, I, I remember I went to uh, Florida. I went to Texas because I I've only grew up I grew up in New Jersey and I've never traveled outside of my home state. And the moment I got on the plane, you know, it always fascinated me. You know, hearing the plane, sitting down when it's taking off, and then flying into the sky. You know, it, it never crossed my mind to become a pilot up until I started doing it, like, on a regular basis. And I started telling myself, like, okay, these pilots are getting paid to travel, and they're going to be really good. I mean, they're getting a, a hotel, you know, covered for it. Sometimes, obviously, the airline is, gonna, is not going to cover for it. But you have that power to fly a plane because it's definitely an experience a lot of people don't go through you know you, you have these millionaires and, and these billionaires i mean i'm assuming they've never even controlled you know a, a plane before it's just an experience that can't be bought and to have that as a career it kind of lit that fire in me that wanted me to pursue this career and stuff so I got into uh, an electrical company without a warehouse. I was a driver for them. I was basically just kind of delivering all their stuff. And then I was provided with a box truck. And that's where I kind of started a lot. I would drive down the New Jersey Turnpike down south. I would go down to uh, Bordington, New Jersey. And, you know, it was a 24-foot box truck. It wasn't really too big. But I kind of got used to it. You know, I guess once you lose that fear of kind of starting into a bigger vehicle, because I went from driving a uh, then to driving a SUV with this company and then driving a, a van and then it was a GNC I, I, I forgot what, what exactly what model it was and from there I went to a box truck and after that box truck um, you know at that point I was like okay like it's not too bad I know it's definitely not similar to driving a tractor or a trailer but I um, a gentleman from XPO came and kind of got me into, you know, I asked him, I was like, dude, how old are you? He's like, I'm, I'm only like 23. And at the time I was 20, I was 21. And then at that point I was like, okay, like 
I had no idea you could get your CDL at such a young age. I got my CDL and, you know, fast forward a year now, you know, I left XPO, I'm with this company now. I'm not necessarily really too satisfied with the pay. And, you know, I started rethinking my life. I mean, for all the truck drivers out there and stuff that are doing over the road, a lot of people don't understand what we go through. Uh, mental health plays a big part of it. You know, we're going down endless miles, sometimes 500 miles in a straight line. Whether if you're what, like, you can listen to, you can only listen to so many podcasts to music before you start getting pretty bored of like what you're listening to and you know you just to me it's just i got into my head too much i tried everything to um from there like again podcast music eventually it's just i shut it off and i just want to drive in with peace and, 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 and like no sound with the windows down and at that point i started getting into my head I was like okay i'm not satisfied where i'm at i'm definitely in a better position than most of the people I know and the most of people my age um, that are like 22 and stuff because I'm definitely making a good amount. But to me, it's still not enough. And, you know, I started rethinking my life all over again. And here I am again, starting uh, starting my school in November. November 6th, I'm starting with an academy down in South Carolina, Myrtle Beach. Flying Ac- or Aviation Academy, um, did you get a grant? for that school or did or is all of this coming out of pocket and if so can you let us know like how much something like that costs yeah so i didn't get a grant uh this is where i definitely know i am shooting myself in the leg 100 percent um i mean this is exactly why i didn't even go to college either but um i know it, it, so it's called uh it's called the lift academy and the tuition is about eighty-two grand, and the housing and everything. Because I don't have any relatives besides one relative I know, but I'm I'm pretty sure she doesn't live by Myrtle Beach. I could be wrong. I, I haven't spoken to her in years, but you know the housing is an extra fifteen thousand dollars. So in total, I'm thinking about somewhere about like a hundred and five thousand uh, dollars of uh, of a lo- a student loan. And I won't have to repay it up until I get a guy like finish a year and graduate from the academy. So it's roughly about 105 grand. I know there's other schools that are way cheaper. There's other, I know there's a school uh, down in Florida. I forget the name of it, but it, it runs you about like 73 grand. But the thing with that program is you have to. There's certain stuff that you do have to pay out of pocket. Pilots do make bank though. Do they? I mean, I, I would imagine that they that they would, considering the fact that flying is is a dangerous job, I guess, and you kind of like putting your life on the line and 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 relying on the the machinery to to do its job, and you you should get paid well, right? I mean, unlike how trucking is. We we gotta fight for our rates. We're not getting paid what we're worth. Uh, uh, trucking companies is just beating us up and everything. But we're flying or getting with certain aviation companies. It, it getting paid what you're worth and 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 um, and stuff like that. You shouldn't have too much of a problem with once you get your aviation license, right? Yeah, that's why I'm not necessarily really too like worried about that ginormous loan and stuff. I I definitely do truth from like like the bottom of my heart believe I can pay it off within like two to four years at max. Just because right now I'm 22, I don't have no kids. Yes, yeah, like um, yeah, like I said, I'm 22, I don't have no kids, I don't have any big responsibility besides paying some of the bills that I have to really worry about. But that's really about it. And um, you know, I I definitely do see myself going down to South Carolina with the mentality of wanting to come out on top of all the other students and stuff. Because I did it with the CDO. You know, when I got my CDO, I was the first one to pass among all the other people in my class. They were older than me by like 10, 15, 16 years. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, I've never really even been competitive before. I mean, in school, man, I could get nothing but like C's. And up until I started maturing more, started working out, um, kind of basically uh, listening to self-help, I just kind of realized that, like, repeating, you know, certain rituals and stuff, 
man, that is going to take you really far and stuff. I mean, with the CDL and stuff, I, I thought it was going to be really hard, but, you know, I read the, the, the manual over and over and over and over again and, you know, read the questions, took tests many times before I went to it. And, man, I remember I, I went and I, I, I aced basically everything, my hazmat, my triples and doubles, my tanker. Now, you know, some may say, okay, you know, trucking and aviation are two completely different things. Like, you know, they, the test might be harder. Yeah, I definitely do agree, right? But nothing in this life is really easy if you really think about it. So, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not going in either thinking, oh, it's going to be easy. No, I know it's going to be really hard. And it, the way I see it, it's like it really is the life of that situation. Because if I don't make it out of, out of aviation school, if I don't pass, man, I'm going to have that ginormous loan on my back. And at that point, I, I, I'm literally going to, like, I don't know what I'm going to have to do. But I'm not going in with a scarcity mindset. You know, I mean, I'm going in. I don't prepared and I'm, I'm I'm ready for war. You mentioned that uh aviation and trucking is different. I, I was gonna ask you was there any parallels to it? Like we we was four weeks training here, uh pre trip, post trip, um and making sure that the truck runs. Is there any is there any parallels to that with with uh with the plane, with aviation? Is there certain uh, is there certain items that you got to make sure that it's on point, like pre-tripping and pre-tripping and post-tripping the plane? Yeah. So, so when I took a, a discovery flight, it's basically a, any. So anyone can take this flight uh, anywhere around the United States as long as you have a, a valid ID and you pay a fee of one hundred and twenty bucks and then sixty bucks on top of that for the fuel and the tip. Um. Anyone can take a, a, it's called a discovery flight. And you're going to have an instructor basically show you everything. And you, if you're a truck driver, you're going to realize, you're going to realize how close, like, the pre-trip with a plane and a truck are. Like, you have to, like, know the tread depth of the, the tires. You know, you're going to have to basically check all the, check the wings, make sure they're not, like, cracked or broken. Like, the, I, the, the guy that, his name was Jason, the, the instructor that taught me. I told them exactly, I was like, okay, this is so scary. I, and the, I told them, I was like, how in the world is like this like really so similar to pre-tripping like a, a truck and everything? So when you get into the professional world and talking about like for a commercial airline, prior to you doing your own pre-trip with your captain, there's uh, mechanics that do it, that they basically pre-trip the, the entire plane already before you even take off. They make sure there's no mechanical, electrical issues. And then obviously at that at that at that point, you know, once they do their side, now it's your turn to do it. So it's really safe. But yeah, like basically pre-tripping and post-tripping is. is, is, is. Rock the bell. L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L L